Hello everyone, Farmapil welcomes you all busy people to yet another learning video. In this video, we are going to decode European Pharmacopoeia Journal Chapter Number 2.1.7. And the title of European Pharmacopoeia Journal Chapter Number 2.1.7 is Balances for Analytical Purposes. So, whosoever is working in the pharma industry, he should be aware of the requirements mentioned in the European Pharmacopoeia Journal Chapter Number 2.1.7. And one more important thing which I want to mention here is that if your organization or company is marketing medicines in the European countries, then you should be aware of the European Pharmacopoeia requirements. So this video is an attempt from PharmaPill channel to create an awareness about European Pharmacopoeia Journal Chapter Number 2.1.7. So with this note, let's get started with today's video. So guys, if you read this journal chapter number, then you will come to know that there are five main topics covered in this journal chapter. So let us see what are those. So number one is principle of electronic and mechanical balances. Number two is types of analytical balances. Number three is requirements related to installation of new balances. Like what are the key points which we should ensure while installing new analytical balance in the laboratory. Number four, balance calibration parameters as per European Pharmacopoeia. And number five is weighing procedures of different different types of the samples. So let us understand all these topics one by one. So the very first line of European Pharmacopoeia journal chapter number 2.1.7 says that this journal chapter number is only applicable to the balances which are used for analytical purposes. And this general chapter number do not cover the balances which are used for manufacturing or other purposes. So for an easy understanding, I can say that this general chapter number is applicable to the quality control laboratory only. Now let us begin by looking at the principle of analytical balances. So friends, we know that balance is an instrument which is used to determine the mass of an object. And the SI unit for the mass is kilogram and along with the kilogram its uh, sub multiples like uh, gram, milligram and the microgram are also used. So during the weighing different physical principles of the mass determination are used but majority are based on the gravitational force. There are two most common principles which are used to measure the gravitational force and those are force compensation and the mass comparison with the known mass. So force compensation principle is used in the electronic balances and the mass comparison uh, principle is used in the mechanical balances. We will not go into the details further. This much information is sufficient to know that uh, force compensation principle is used in the electronic balances and mass comparison is used in the mechanical balances. So this was all about the principle of electronic and mechanical balances. Now let us learn about the types or classification of the balances as per EP journal chapter number 2.1.7. So here you can see that EP journal chapter number 2.1.7 has classified analytical balances into two major types and those are precision balances and analytical balances. Analytical balances further has been classified into three types. Those are semi micro balances, micro balances and ultra micro balances. Now, if you want to know more about these different different types of the balances, then you can check the video link given in the description as I have already made a video on the types of balances. So I will not go into the details further in this video. So this was all about the classification of the balances. Now comes the third topic which we are going to learn and this is related to the installation and location. So under this we will learn that what are the things which need to be taken care while installing a new balance in the laboratory. So it is always recommended to follow the manufacturer's instructions while installing new balance. So while installing the new balance we have to make sure that the surrounding condition and the location do not affect the balance performance. The environmental conditions which generally affect the balance performance are temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, air currents, dust, electrostatic force, magnetic force and vibrations etc. So these were the environmental conditions which affects your weighing. Well friends irrespective of the construction materials, the weighing bench should be stable, 
non magnetic and vibration proof along with that the weighing bench should be protected from the electrostatic charges and sometimes you might have seen in the laboratory that uh, weighing pan of the balances are located inside the enclosure this is done to reduce the dust collection and influence of air currents during the weighing activity such type of balances are generally used for the weighing of small masses friends it's very important to check the level of the balance before weighing most of the balances are having bubble level which must be brought into the center by modifying the height of the feet of weighing balance and one most important golden rule of the weighing which you should always follow that is balance must be allowed to warm up after they are connected to the power supply along with that make sure that the balances are left power up because this will allow them to stay in the thermal equilibrium now let us see what are the requirements related to the weighing vessels so weighing vessel should be made up of inert materials or non magnetic materials generally glass and plastic is used so while selecting the weighing vessel make sure that the size of the weighing vessel does not compromise the accuracy and repeatability during the weighing process so for the weighing of solid materials weighing paper dishes and funnels are used whereas for the weighing of liquid materials sea level vessels such as bottle vials and flasks are used so weighing dishes are typically made from a polymer glass or a metal such as aluminum weighing vessel and the sample must have the same temperature as their surrounding and the balance now comes the fourth topic which is mentioned in the ep journal chapter number 2.1.7 so well friends as per ep journal chapter number 2.1.7 there are two test parameters of balance calibration and those are sensitivity and repeatability friends if you remember as per usp there are five test parameters of a balance calibration and those are accuracy repeatability linearity sensitivity and eccentricity so here you can see the difference between ep and usp journal chapters with respect to balance calibration parameters so ep says two parameters and usp says five calibration parameters for a balance calibration now how these test parameters are different in case of ep and usp that we will cover in the next part of the video so guys this was all about today's video hope you have learned something new today before we winding up today's video let me tell you one thing that in next video we will learn about the calibration parameters of balance as per european pharmacopeia till then stay tuned to pharmapill bye bye and happy learning